Hello and welcome to lecture 12 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. Today we will start a series of four lectures presenting the material from chapter 4, which includes several models of diffusion and their properties. In this lecture we will discuss section 4.1, covering models of diffusion or Brownian motion, which are based on stochastic differential equations. Brownian motion is named after Scottish botanist Robert Brown, who observed it in 1827. I have copied here a paragraph from one of his papers, summarizing his observations. He wrote that extremely minute particles of solid matter, whether obtained from organic or inorganic substances, when suspended in pure water, or in some other aqueous fluids, exhibit motions for which I am unable to account and which from their irregularity and seeming independence resemble in a remarkable degree the less rapid motions of some of the simplest animalcules of infusions. I have highlighted in this quote that these motions are irregular, which could motivate our first model of diffusion written in terms of stochastic differential equations. However, I should note that such a model can be derived from more detailed models of Brownian motion, which we will discuss in Chapter 8, which will be covered in our lectures at the end of our course. In Chapter 4, we will simply postulate this model as a description of Brownian motion and study its properties. Consider a diffusing particle described by its position x, y, z. Diffusion is characterized by one parameter, called the diffusion constant d, and we will describe the time evolution of the position x, y, z by the following three stochastic differential equations. We will interpret this model using our computational definition of stochastic differential equations, that is, we choose a small time step delta t, and at each iteration of our stochastic simulation, we generate three random numbers, which are normally distributed with zero mean and unit variance, and we calculate the position at time t plus delta t from the position at time t by adding a normally distributed random displacement, which is suitably scaled with the diffusion constant d. The video on the right shows the time evolution of one diffusing particle, starting from the origin. I have already shown this video in our motivating lecture zero. In that lecture, I was interested to show connections between models written at different scales. To obtain deterministic, predictable quantities, I simulated many realizations of this stochastic process. In this video, I have added five more illustrative realizations. At the end of our simulations, I divide the domain into compartments and count the number of particles in each compartment. Since particles are independent of each other, the probability density of a single particle is proportional to the spatio-temporal density of particles, which I denoted P. Therefore, if we simulate millions of particles, divide the domain into compartments, and count the numbers of particles in compartments, we obtain a relatively smooth spatio-temporal density of particles, as shown in figure 4.1b, which can also be obtained by solving the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation, which is the diffusion equation, or heat equation, written in the lecture notes as equation 4.8. Another observation which we can make is that equations for coordinates xt, yt, and zt are not coupled. So without the loss of a generality, we can explain some material in chapter 4 by considering simplified one-dimensional models. One such a problem is introduced in section 4.1. In this model, we only consider the time evolution of the first coordinate x, so it is a Brownian motion simulated in a finite one-dimensional domain, that is, in an interval of length L. In my simulation, I choose L to be equal to 1 mm, the diffusion constant 
10 to minus 4 millimeter square per second and the timestamp delta t is equal to 0.1 second. To simulate Brownian motion, we use the algorithm A8C8 from the lecture notes. This algorithm is simulating this stochastic differential equation. By generating normally distributed random number xi at each iteration of the algorithm and updating the position x according to this equation. Since this is just our computational definition of SDE, which we discussed in detail in chapter 3, the first two steps of this algorithm is what we did in chapter 3. The only modification is that we have to specify suitable boundary conditions at x is equal 0 and x is equal L. This is important in this application area and we have two dedicated sections discussing boundary conditions for diffusion in chapter 4. In our first illustrative example, we assume that we have a reflective boundary. That is, whenever formula 411 gives the calculated position xt plus delta t outside of our domain, we reflect it back to the domain. This is very easy to implement in a computer. For example, if this computed value is negative, then we just change its sign to be positive. In panel A of figure 4.2, which is presented here, we plot 10 illustrative trajectories of the diffusing particle, each starting at point 0.4 millimeters. Since we use the SDE411, we know that it can be equivalently described by the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation for the time-evolving probability density function, which can also be interpreted as the equation for the number density of diffusing particles. In figure 4.2b, we present a simulation of 1000 particles. To visualize our results, I divided our domain, interval 0L, into 40 compartments and count the number of molecules in each compartment. The results are plotted as gray histogram in figure 4.2b in the lecture notes or in this video. Figure 4.2b from the lecture notes is just a snapshot of this video at time 4 minutes. While this video illustrates the dynamics of the system from the initial time until time 10 minutes. Gray histogram is compared with the solution of the Fokker-Planck equation with no flux boundary conditions. That is the solution of the diffusion equation with no flux boundary conditions. This solution can also be viewed as the deterministic model which gives us the average behavior of the system. If we repeated the simulation million times and averaged the calculated gray histograms, we would obtain the red line. Remember that in this simple model our particles are non-interacting. Therefore, a computation of 1 million of realizations of a system with one particle is equivalent to calculating one realization of a system with 1 million of particles. The only difference is how we interpret our calculated results. And a multiple of the solution of this PDE is also a solution and the computed densities would just be scaled by a suitable factor. This brings me to the end of lecture 12, where we discuss section 4.1 covering diffusion modeled by SDEs. Please read pages 96 to 100 of the lecture notes before watching the video of lecture 13. In our next lecture, we will continue in our discussion of chapter 4, introducing the compartment-based approach to diffusion. Thank you very much for listening to lecture 12 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. Bye-bye.